Kim Kardashian has reacted to Taylor Swift's diss track about her. Taylor recently released a brand new diss track about Kim Kardashian and the song is titled Thank You Amy. Because the song is in lowercase and Taylor capitalized the letters K, I and M, people immediately knew the song was about Kim Kardashian. In the song, Taylor sings the lyrics. All that time you were throwing punches, I was building something. And I can't forgive the way you made me feel, I can't forget the way you made me heal. It wasn't a fair fight or a clean kill. Everyone knows that my mother is a saintly woman, but she used to say she wished that you were dead. Hey Swifties. Get ready to dive into the whirlwind of Taylor Swift's latest album. I'm Kate and today we're breaking down the jaw-dropping tracks that have everyone talking. First up, let's talk about the explosive track, Thank You Amy. Rumors have been swirling about Taylor Swift's beef with Kim Kardashian, and this song seems to confirm it. With lyrics like, wishing you were dead, Taylor and her mom's shocking words have sparked a frenzy online. People were shocked by these lyrics because Taylor is admitting that her mom even wished that Kim Kardashian was dead. This is very harsh and shocking to hear. People have been heavily discussing these lyrics with some people loving the song and some people saying that Taylor took it too far with the dead lyrics. A few hours after the song was released, Kim Kardashian commented underneath an infamous quote by Biggie. The quote was, I never wish death on nobody, cause there ain't coming back from that. Kim commented underneath his saying, never. This is obviously Kim's way of saying that she would never wish death Death upon anybody and she thinks it's awful for anyone to want to do that to someone. Fans online are all discussing the controversial lyrics Taylor used in the song. One fan said, Taylor absolutely snapped. Kim has been messing with her for years, trying to undermine her career and paint her like a snake for no good reason. This diss track is well-deserved payback. That line about her mom is iconic. I live for this level of shade. Another fan said, this whole situation is a mess. I get being annoyed with someone, but both Taylor and Kim have taken it to extremes. The death stuff is chilling, and Kim isn't innocent either. I honestly just wish they'd both move on and let this endless back and forth die. And finally, one more fan said, I love Taylor's music, but this song is way too far. Wishing death on someone, that's not petty beef. It's incredibly dark and disturbing. Kim has a lot more class. I always knew she was the bigger person in this feud. Taylor should be ashamed. Wow, she really took it there. Who knew her beef with Kim was that deep? But that's not all, folks. Taylor Swift isn't just stirring up drama with her lyrics, she's also getting personal. In, but daddy I love him, she opens up about her relationship with Travis and even hints at having kids with him. Talk about a plot twist. It's Taylor Mania all over again. Welcome to the Eras Tour. She's still globe hopping with the world's biggest tour. I always just love coming to Tokyo. Unleashed, the world's biggest concert film of all time. She's one half of the world's most talked about couples. I love you so much. I'm working on portrait poets. Uh, since right after I turned in Midnight's. My relationship for six years, we've had to dodge weird rumors, tabloid stuff, and we just ignore it. Um, and so this song is sort of about the act of ignoring that stuff to protect, to protect the real stuff. She and Travis haven't shied away from the spotlight. They put on a PDA fest at the Coachella Music Festival. Trav and Jason talked about it on their New Heights podcast. We know who you went with. We saw the pictures. She was supporting the, uh, the new the heights. Dip yeah. Sold out of the green hat real quick. It's a good it's a good color green. Taylor's lyrics are raw and unapologetic, and she's sparing no one. It seems like she's airing out her grievances with longtime friends Selena Gomez and Charlie Puth for the world to hear. But of course, best friend, there is some drama already happening with Taylor Swift, Charlie Puth, and Selena Gomez. Now, if you guys obviously know, Selena and Taylor are best friends. They're soul sisters. They are, you know, they are the peanut butter to the jelly, you know, or the almond butter to the jelly. Or for those who are, you know, uh, allergic to nuts, they are the jelly to the bread. But if you're gluten-free, then they're the jelly. Girl, they're the this okay bitch because we have so many diet restrictions nowadays that i'm just like girl it, i don't listen where did all these diet restrictions really did come from i mean like i don't remember as a kid like you know all of this crazy things but you know i have so many diet restrictions too but i'm not sure if i'm making them up in my head or they're actually real can anyone relate to that bitch anyways um we gotta talk about this all right best friend so it's no secret that selena gomez and taylor are besties soul sisters if you will cheetah girls because we are sisters we stand together anyways girls so taylor swift's latest album is dropping tonight at midnight the tortured poets department and the swifties are going crazy okay now listen this album is set to be like one of the most personal albums from miss taylor and 
everyone is excited. Well, everyone got a little bit too excited because the album allegedly leaked on social media and a lot of Swifties are really, really furious. And, you know, everyone is doing their best to, of course, not listen to it. But unfortunately, allegedly, it's out there. And there's a lyric in one of these songs that are upsetting the Selena Gomez fans. So, so Taylor Swift allegedly mentions Charlie Puth in a song. So Taylor Swift in the track and the title track of the Tortured Poets Department says, "We declare Charlie Puth should be a bigger artist." Now, the reason why fans are upset and calling Taylor Swift out and saying that she's an alleged ba bad friend is because Charlie Puth wasn't as nice to Miss Selena Gomez in public. And there was a lot of drama there, best friend. So listen, um, everything started basically says Puth and Gomez public interaction started in 2016 when they released a duet, We Don't Talk Anymore. After the release of the song, rumors that Puth and Gomez were romantically involved started to swirl. This was not long after Gomez split from Justin Bieber. So there was already, it was already messy. Puth decided to take things one step further by stating that he and Gomez did have a relationship and that it didn't end well. So from the get-go, there's drama, right? And this is where it starts to get a little bit messy because, you know, even if there's some type of past, should your friends bring up that or even associate with that person from your past? You know, that's kind of the big question here. Charlie Puth says, I don't kiss and tell, but the only way a song like that can come across as real is if there's something else going on behind the scenes. And that's what's happening with Gomez, Puth told Billboard. Very short-lived, very small, and very impactful. And it really messed me up. I'm trying to put this the best way possible. It wasn't like I was the only person on her mind. And I think I knew what was going on what I was getting myself into. So he made a whole damn storyline, girl. And just to be clear, Selena Gomez has denied, like, ever dating Charlie Puth. So there's that, okay? Um, of course, you know, a lot of fans were like, okay, what's going on? Is it real? Is it not real? Like, did they date? Who to believe? Well, best friend, things get a little bit messier because in a video for Genius, Puth broke the song down, which was attention, and had many fans believe that it was about Gomez. Adding fuel to the fire, Puth tweeted, attention is about what you think it's about. He then deleted the tweet. What he says in this video that I'm about to show you, I found it to be so, like, just so gross, so inappropriate, and I want you guys to watch it because I never, I didn't ever see this side from him. And I always see him as like a silly little brother figure thing. And hearing him talk the way he did in this video, I think is going to shock a lot of us. Take a look at this. We would be talking in the hotel. She'd be like, you want to sleep over? And be like, yes, I'm going to get it in. And then nothing would happen, which is totally fine. But after like the fifth time of that happening, she's just, she, I, I knew, I, I knew what she was doing. Um, I knew that she was um, trying to make me so embedded to her that like I would never leave her, but I would never get what I wanted out of her. So she was doing that repeatedly just to get something out of me, um, which was for me. Mm. So again, best friend, <laughs> Gomez, Queen Selena says, I do not know her. Look at what the fans are writing. They're saying, as a big Selena fan that I am, it's not that deep. Charlie Puth can be whatever people say about him, even when Selena never talked about him. But he is, in fact, a great artist with such a big talent as a musician, and it's and it's just a lyric of a song. Another one said, I don't understand what was the words of Charlie to go with Selena promoting skims. And a lot of people are talking about that, that if, you know, if... Taylor and Selena have to respect like their personal dramas, then, you know, Selena shouldn't have any association with skims. Um, another fan said, I don't think Selena gives enough of a, f of a F about Charlie to even be inconvenienced. If she doesn't care, why should anyone else leave Selena Gomez alone? Can't you just see that all of this uh, confusion only hurts her? She's fed up living her life uh, and the fan club is looking for trouble. Stop. She really wants peace. That's another thing that a lot of people are saying. It's like, you know, who should it bother? 
Another fan po uh, wrote, I think it's just stupid how people take offense to everything. LMAO, we're not part of their friendship. It's their business, not ours. Uh, that's, yes, uh, for real. Uh, another person said, if Selenators were as productive for Selena's career as they are for creating drama, she could probably be the main pop girl today next to Ariana and Taylor. Uh, excuse you, she is a main pop girl, okay, bitch? Some other comments are, okay, but imagine the hell that would break loose on Stan Twitter if Selena shouted out Calvin Harris. Harris, Taylor's no angel, so who is surprised? Just as the same, just just as the same, you don't know anything about what happened between Taylor and Joe. You don't know anything about Charlie and Selena. Stop pretending you know everything about these celebrities and their personal life. I'm sure Selena and Taylor don't give an F. Okay, so yeah, we got to talk about this, best friend, because we are definitely speculating and creating a bunch of drama, which I am living for it, bitch. I'm living for it. Anyways, go listen, okay? With each new album, Taylor Swift continues to surprise and captivate us. Whether she's spilling the tea or wearing her heart on her sleeve, one thing's for sure, she knows how to keep us hooked. What's your favorite track from Taylor's latest album? Do you think she went too far dissing Kim Kardashian and Selena Gomez? Will her and Travis have kids together? Let us know in the comments below.